got our first proper lookout. Oh my god, this is so cool. This trail will kill me. No reception. No reception. Straight into the water. <laughs> Today we're hiking in the Bruce Peninsula National Park. It's one of the most popular national parks in Canada. Okay, so here's the real reason why we're here. I personally really want to know, is it really worth the four hour drive from Toronto? And is it really that breathtakingly beautiful? So in this video today, we're gonna assess the true beauty of Bruce Peninsula. And we'd like to take you on this trip with us. Well, we're gonna stay here for two nights and three days. We're gonna show you the scenery, um, how the trail looks like. We're taking the high dump trail. The forecast says it might rain tonight and tomorrow. But fingers crossed, it doesn't rain too much. It's not recommended to swim here. There is an average of one death per year. Cold water, deep waters, very strong winds and currents. It's very hard to call for emergency here. Okay, so we're at the crossroads. We've hiked for about 800 meters and now we're turning right to the high dump campground. We have about 6.2 kilometers to hike and it's supposed to be a pretty challenging hike. So let's see if it actually is challenging. Once you step onto this trail, it's like you're immediately transported into a magical world of forest. So we're about half an hour through and we've, we're reaching the cliff. I think I can see the water, but let's wait for the ah oh moment. One thing I always like to do when I hike, and look what's under your feet. And sometimes you find really nice and pretty plants and flowers. There are three things that you should be aware. Rattlesnakes, poison ivy and bears. Seems like this is the first lookout point. A mini lookout point. So we're about an hour through. We've gone through 2.5 kilometers. First observations, it's magically beautiful. It smells like pine. We got our first proper lookout. Look how blue the water is. Maybe we'll swim a little very carefully. Wow. This is the ah moment I was talking about. Look. Since Bruce Peninsula is such a popular touristic destination, Parks Canada are doing their best to preserve the beauty of this nature. Rules in this park are really strict. You have to leave no trace, as usual. If you're washing something, you need to do that 30 meters away from any main water source. You have to hide all your food in a food locker because there are some bears in this area. No alcohol is allowed during long weekends. There are obviously quiet hours. And if you're a fan of campfires, I have bad news for you, because no open fire is permitted here. So the terrain here is fairly difficult. There's lots of protruding rocks and roots, and you're constantly going up and down. If uh, you trust my watch, we've descended at 43 meters and we've ascended 37. So the total altitude fluctuation for us has been around 100 meters so far. Working out with fresh air definitely helps. This is where it starts getting a little bit more difficult. We are three kilometers through, and I think there's gonna be steeper elevation gains going forward. So 
so we're done with 3.5 kilometers. And I'm done with mosquitoes. What's interesting though is that the beginning of this trail did not have this many mosquitoes. And now it is time for our first snack. I like it. One thing I appreciate about this trail is that if you ever feel tired, a view like this will re-energize you for sure. Looks like we're, our cliff is overhang. We're actually floating in the air. Yes. We're on top of the rock and there is something else beneath us. Natural balcony. We're at almost six kilometers mark. This is not an easy trail. I would give it a solid four out of five. Lots of switching up and down. 100 meters up, 100 meters down. Very sharp rocks. Sometimes slippery, sometimes you need to use your hands. We're lucky that it's been dry, but I can imagine that taking this trail right after rain might be pretty slippery and dangerous. The sun is out, it's getting hot, it's five o'clock. Our energy is slowly leaving us. We didn't have breakfast or lunch, only power bars and coffee. Yeah. Hopefully an hour more and we're there. Actually, this is a prime example of going up and down. Exhibit A is going down. We're finally here, the infamous rope trail, or the last part on the way back to the high dump camp. The last 400 meters before we reach the campsite. Why would they tie it down so low? Constant up and down, up and down. We ran out of water as well, getting thirsty and hungry. 20 meters done. Now, we thought that the rope would stretch all the way down. This trail will kill me. And we're here. This is our campsite, number five. Right there, it's right up there. And then there's the uh, bear hangers up top for food. Next to our campsite. Yeah, and then the water. So what I wanna do, just run straight into the water. The water is amazing. The water is pretty cold, but you know what? After a long day of hike, it's worth it. You definitely should try that. No matter how cold it is, just dip in, you'll enjoy and appreciate it after. All the campsites are like wooden pads, so we cannot use tent sticks. So I'll use the rope instead to secure the tent. If you know how to keep your rope untangled all the time, leave me a comment below. Everything is perfect here, except it started raining. I'm eating in the rain, just eating in the rain. What a glorious feeling. And the flies are notorious. They're biting harder than mosquitoes. But hey, it's beautiful. It's breathtakingly beautiful. How was the day, Anna? It was tough, but the end of the day was very satisfying. Delicious dinner, beautiful, magnificent views, and very nice company. I'm talking about seagulls. I'm also not a big fan of tea, but there's just something to drinking tea, watching the sunset in the nature. And it's raining a little bit. The forecast says it would rain tonight, um, so we're slowly gonna start packing. No 
reception. And now we wait. Anastasia's favorite. It'll be raining until approximately 1 p.m. today. So I guess we'll just play cards. <coughs> okay, so the rain is still going, so I suggest we play some fun facts game. So the history of Bruce Peninsula is quite fascinating. It was inhabited by First Nations people until Europeans came interested in timber and fishing, and they privatized Bruce Peninsula in exchange for agriculture and construction technology. Unfortunately, very soon enough, all the forests were cut out and the timber was gone. For the most part of the 20th century, Bruce Peninsula was stagnating, up until 1970s, when it started to become popular among cottagers. If you thought that exchanging knowledge for land was a little bit sketchy, in 1994, the First Nations actually filed a suit against the Crown, trying to claim some of their original territory and get some compensation for the fact that Canada essentially breached the trust and did not meet their obligations of the treaty. This claim is still ongoing up until today. It's been over 20 years with no resolution. On this note, I think the rain is finally over and it's time to have lunch. We skip the breakfast. This is the first time we're using this mechanism. What do you think of it? Super convenient. You I just clip the food to this cord, lift it up, and then you fix it. I think we can do the same uh, when we're wild camping as well. You'll just need a couple of ropes and that's it. The weather is really good, it's sunny, but a little bit windier than yesterday. And the water feels nice. And now it's time to change and go to swim. Good morning. Good morning. Last day, you woke up at 6.30 a.m. We're packing up quickly, um, having some quick breakfast, and we're heading out because we have to be on the trail at 8 a.m. The smell of coffee in the morning after camping is the best coffee smell ever. It got a lot colder tonight, um, so we had to get dressed up during sleep. It's cloudy, it's windy, temperature is about 16 degrees now. So we're gonna try and stay warm, have some breakfast. Yay, can't wait. So this is our last day. We're just coming out to say bye to the sea or to the lake brother. And we're hiking back to our parking lot, which is somewhere here, right there.
Is Bruce Peninsula worth it? I think it's worth it to visit it at least once a year. It's a very beautiful place. Glacial water. It's really cold, but honestly, it's it's very much of a bliss to dip in the water and then come outside. And, and to feel this solitude on the beach. The campsite only has 10 camps, so it's very private. You can go for a walk in the forest or along the beach. And I when think it's it, amazing. When it becomes windy, it sounds like an ocean, almost. This trail is hard. It's 7.6 kilometers, I believe, but it, honestly, it's worth it. You get views like this, some fresh wind and fresh air. And I have um, to say it's very well maintained. The park is very clean and uh, leave a thumbs up for people who maintain this trail. National Park staff are doing a great job. They're even doing volunteer guided tours here to help clean up the trash in case some people left it so if you're into that kind of stuff please sign up and you'll get a free guided tour yes but regardless of that pre please respect the nature and other than that let us know what you think about this video and about this format would you travel to Bruce Peninsula so our goal with these kinds of videos is show you Canada and what it looks like and one of the main components of Canada is outdoors and its beautiful nature and if you like this video please don't forget to click the like button below and subscribe to our channel for more videos to come and we'll see you in the next one maybe it'll be a hiking video maybe it'll be two talking heads we'll see take care guys bye